Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Well, I had a great week off last week. I got caught up on a lot of things and I greatly appreciate you coming back and joining me for this week's project. Now this week's project is a pretty fun one and a pretty simple one. It's a modular bookshelf and it's great for you beginning woodworkers as well as you advanced woodworkers out there. The bookshelf itself only takes two boards to make and a very limited amount of tools. Now, as far as displaying the shelf, it can be orientated in different directions. It can be stood up on its side. It could be added to by making additional cubes. Uh, it's really unlimited as far as how creative you could get with it. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, guys, when it comes to making the modular bookshelves, the construction is pretty straightforward, and the material list is quite simple. All you need is two eight-foot boards. Now, the width of those boards, that just depends on how wide you want your shelves to be. I'm going to be using nine and a quarter inch wide boards. That will allow me to make this either a bookshelf or a wine rack or a combination thereof. All right, the construction of the unit itself is simple rabbit joinery, and those rabbits can be cut many ways. A few of them are on the table saw, with a router, large or small, on a router table, or if you're a hand tool person, a set of chisels. Now, to actually cut the material down to size, you only need a couple of tools. Uh, you can either use a hand saw, you can use a jigsaw, a skill saw, or a table saw. Um, the cuts are all 90 degree cuts except for one piece. You're going to have two 45s at the end of that. Speaking of the pieces, we're going to have six 14 inch pieces, six 13 inch pieces, and one 12 inch piece. And that 12 inch piece is the one that has two 45s cut at both ends. I'm going to use all of these tools to make the various cuts and I'm going to show you the different methods in using each one maybe help you out uh, when building yours also the actual assembly itself is going to be quite simple the rabbit joints can be either glued together they can be screwed together or they can be nailed together uh, hopefully when everything's said and done you'll have a quick and simple project that you'll be able to assemble and build in your shop no matter what skill level you're at all right, as I just said, we're going to need six 14-inch pieces, six 13-inch pieces, and one 12-inch piece. Now, I've got my boards clamped to the table here, and I'm going to go ahead and start cutting my 14-inch pieces out. And the first method I'm going to use is with a handsaw. I went ahead and clamped my board to the table so it's nice and secure, and I've measured over and marked my 14-inch line. Now, with slow, steady strokes, I should be able to follow that line to get a nice clean 90 degree cut. Alright, an alternate method for cutting these parts out is using a jigsaw with a straight edge. Now for my straight edge, I'm just using a simple level clamped to the board. I've got my 14 inch mark laid out, but then my straight edge is offset to account for the bed of the saw. When the bed of the saw is up against the straight edge, my blade is in line with my cut line. And I'm square all the way through, so it should assure me a nice square cut. All right, another method for cutting these parts out is using a skill saw if that's what you have on hand. Now with the skill saw, we can use the level as a straight edge again. We can use a straight board, uh, or we can use a factory, you know, straight edge that come, that's made. This one's from Craig. Uh, and this particular straight edge is set to your saw. You set it up, and then when you make that first initial cut, it's uh, made for that particular saw in that distance of that saw's bed to the blade. All you have to do is make that fresh cut, that little nib that sticks out here, get that on your line, make your cut. So we're going to go ahead and use uh, this since it's set up for my saw already. I'm going to use this as a straight edge. We're going to cut this next piece. All right, the final method for cutting these parts out is on the table saw. Now you don't need a sled to cut the parts out, just your fence and it is fine, or a miter gauge if you have one on your particular saw. I'm going to use the sled because I have a stop block here that will allow me to make repeated cuts. Um, I, we're still cutting the 14 inch parts out, so I've got my stop block set up for 14 inches. 
I'll cut the rest of those parts out and then we'll switch over and cut out the 13 inch parts. Uh, and I'll just simply adjust that stop block over so I can make those final cuts. And then from there, we'll go over to the joinery of it and cutting the rabbits out. And I'll show you a couple of methods on cutting the rabbits out using two different routers, a palm router and a handheld router. So let's go ahead and finish up these cuts. Alright, with all of the parts cut for our modular bookshelf, we can go ahead and take our 13 inch pieces and set them aside because we're going to be working with the 14 inch pieces. Uh, I do have to say this, it's been a long time since I've used a handsaw and I didn't do too bad, I stayed right on the line. So the one recommendation I can give to a new woodworker that might be using a handsaw is nice, slow, steady cuts and you should have no problem following your line and getting a 90 degree cut out of that saw. So setting these aside on our 14 inch long pieces, we're going to be cutting rabbits on both ends. Now these rabbits are going to be three quarters of an inch wide, a quarter inch deep. Uh, the reason for the three quarter inch width is because that's how thick our stock is. And the quarter inch depth is all we need for our joinery. The method of cutting the rabbits, I'm going to show you a couple of routers. Uh, I'm going to show you a large router, which happens to be a plunge router, but you can use a fixed base router as well. And then I'm going to show you a palm router uh, making your cuts. We're going to be using straight edges uh, as guides, as router guides, so we can get that nice final cut. And also I'm going to show you a quick jig that you could make to help you with setting your depth of cut. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and get set up and get started. All right, for these rabbit cuts, we're going to use a straight guide and the large router for the first cut. I'm going to show you the large router. Now a guide that will guide your router for that final cut can be anything, any type of straight edge from a piece of angle iron to a nice straight board that you know is true and straight. Uh, factory straight edge that actually clamps on the wood or something like this saw and tool guide. Uh, on this particular cut I'm going to use the angle iron. Now that I know what straight edge I'm going to use, I need to go ahead and know where to set it up on the board so I get a 3 quarter inch wide rabbit. Now in order to determine that, I need to measure my router's base. Usually on a lot of routers, there's a flat edge on the base and that flat edge is what's going to ride up against my guide. Uh, if yours does not have a straight edge, just pick one of the edges and make sure that that edge because you're going to measure off of it. Make sure that edge is the edge that you ride up against your guide. Uh, from this flat edge on my router, I'm going to measure to the edge of my router bit and get that distance. So now once you have your measurement from the edge of your router to the edge of your bit, you can transfer that measurement to your workpiece. And from your layout line, which for us is three quarters of an inch, back, however wide your measurement is here, that's where your guide is going to sit. Now to make things a lot easier, there's a simpler way of doing this. For me, since I have some scrap pieces from the stock that I'm using and a nice flat edge on my router, I can go ahead and actually take that piece and lay it up against the flat edge. And then I can take something like a marking square and actually set my depth from there, from the outside edge of my workpiece. And once I have that depth set, so now I can take my marking square with that setting on there and come right up to my workpiece and lay out my line. And that line that I just laid out is where my guide is going to go. Now by using the scrap cutoff that I had up against the router, what that's going to assure is that my router bit, as my router runs across this guide here, I'm going to get a nice cut right along my three quarter inch layout line here. So. I'm going to go ahead and I've got my line set up. I'm going to clamp down my straight edge and we'll go ahead and make the cut. So now with my straight edge clamped down, I can go ahead and double check for square, make sure I'm nice and square. And I am. So we can go ahead and set our depth of cut for a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to show you a quick and simple jig for doing that. All right, guys, well, here is that router jig I was telling you about. It's quick and simple. There's nothing to it. It's a piece of scrap wood with two three quarter inch blocks glued to the top of it. And these blocks create a riser platform that my router can sit on. And it doesn't matter what router you have, if it's a fixed base, plunge base, or a palm router, 
Now since our riser platforms are three quarters of an inch, we're going to use that as our base number. And basically we're going to do just a little subtraction. Uh, I've got some blocks here that are different thicknesses. This block is a half inch thick. This one is three eighths of an inch thick. And this one is a quarter inch thick. Well, when I stick these blocks in to here, all I have to do is subtract from three quarters of an inch to get my depth of cut. So for instance, as an example, if I want to make a quarter inch deep cut, which is the depth of cut we're going to be doing for our rabbits, I would stick my half inch block in there because three quarters of an inch minus a half inch is a quarter inch. And I went ahead and wrote the final result or the depth of cut on this block. So simply slide it in there, bring the router down until the bit kisses that block and I'm set for a quarter inch deep. I'm ready to go make my cuts. Same thing for the other two keys. Uh, the 3 8 inch key, if I put it in there, 3 quarters of an inch minus 3 8 equals 3 8. And my quarter inch key, 3 quarters of an inch minus a quarter inch is a half inch. So quick and simple and you can make as many keys as you want depending on your depth of cut. Uh, and it's a great jig to hang on to for your routers and quick setup. So as I said, we're going to be doing quarter inch deep cuts. Uh, for our rabbits, so I'm going to go ahead and throw that in there, bring my router down till the bit kisses it, and I'm ready to go. So with that, let's go make the cuts. All right, so now with the router plugged in, I've got my depth of cut set. Uh, the guide is clamped into place where it needs to be. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a shallow pass. I don't want to take all this at once because one, I'm not using a three quarter inch bit, I'm using a five eighths inch bit. So I need to make a single pass at the edge of the board. And then my second pass, my router will be riding that guide rail for the final cut. So now all we have to do is turn the board around and make the next cut uh, and to set up our guide I've still got my setting in my little marking square here so it's going to make the setup for the next cut even quicker. Always be sure to check for square when setting up your guide just to make sure that you are squared up and once you are you're good to go All right, with one board done, let's go ahead and set up for the small router so you can see how that will work. And uh, then I'll go ahead and knock out the rest of these and we'll get this thing together and we'll talk about the assembly. All right, guys, with the Palm router, no different than the large router. Um, the only thing that's different is where our straight edge or our guide is going to be placed on our board. So the setting that we had in uh, the square, I went ahead and got rid of that. And with the scrap piece of wood placed up against the base, the edge of the base that's going to be riding on the guide, I went ahead and took that measurement from the outside edge of this piece of wood to the edge of the router bit. And that gave me where I need to lay out my straight edge. Same thing as we did before. The only thing that's different is just that measurement number changes. Once again with the palm router, I'm going to be making multiple passes, small passes, until my router rides up against the guide for the final cut. Alright, well, as you can see, with either router, both of them make a nice clean cut. Uh, just a little different, it's a smaller router, so it might take a little bit more passes and everything to get to the final cut. But other than that, it does a great job. So, go ahead and get these finished up. Now, of course, you can make these cuts also on the table saw. Now, I'm not going to show that because I always show that in my videos. That's how normally I cut my rabbits uh, and dados and stuff is on the table saw. 
So on this, I'm going to go ahead and finish this project up with the routers and we'll get to the assembly in just one minute. All right, I went ahead and switched over back over to the big router. Uh, I've got uh, just three more boards to do and um, I've got my jig sitting here with the appropriate key for a quarter inch deep cut. I'm just going to set that real quick and get busy. Alright, with all of our parts cut, routed, and sanded, it's time to assemble the individual cubes. There's going to be three individual cubes for this bookcase. Uh, and, of course, the bookcase can be expanded by just simply making more cubes. And I'll show you the final assembly in just a few minutes. It won't take long to put everything together. Uh, when it comes to the assembly, you can simply glue the cubes together and clamp them until they dry if you have enough clamps. You can use uh, some trim nails. I'm going to use some inch and a half trim nails on mine. Or you can use some wood screws, inch and a quarter will be fine. Since I'm using the trim nails, uh, it's not going to take a lot of glue. I'm just going to put enough glue on here that I can spread it out and have a nice glue joint. And when I'm set, I'm going to pre-drill a small pilot hole for these nails because I'm using pine and it has a tendency to split right at the edges. take these lower support clamps off and that's all they're there for is just to support the piece while I get one side nailed and glued and I can work on the other side. Now for this piece uh, in case you don't have any large clamps but you happen to have a couple of spring clamps laying around I'm gonna use them as stabilizers. I got them clamped to the bottom of this board. Uh, it's one of the side pieces and that'll just keep it stabilized in position while I uh, do the work that I need to do. And I'm going to take another side piece here and just it'll act as a balance on the other side while I'm working it one side at a time. Now I can go ahead and take those spring clamps off and turn everything around to where I can work on the other side. Alright, once you have all three cubes assembled Go ahead and if you want, set your nails. Uh, a good way if you don't have any wood filler is uh, get your nail heads set a little bit. Add a little bit of wood glue in there and do some sanding uh, with you know a 180 or, or a 220 sandpaper and, and get that fine sawdust in there and it'll create its own wood filler uh, to fill those nail holes if you'd like. Uh, what I'm going to do is now that we are all assembled on each cube. I'm going to go ahead and do a final sanding and make sure that my sides are all flushed up. My tops or fronts and backs, should I say, are nice and, and, and flush and cleaned up. And uh, then we'll go ahead and assemble the whole unit. Okay guys, to assemble the unit together, we're going to go ahead and take one of the cubes and place it on top of another. Now, it's going to take four inch and a quarter wood screws. We're going to put four here and then we'll screw this one to the side here and put four here attaching these two pieces. On these two, the, two uh, the first two you screw together, you want to make sure that the side pieces with the rabbits that they're running in the same direction to give it just you know so it's visually appealing uh, and it kind of blends. If you have it the other way where the rabbits are up here and these are here You'll, you'll, it'll throw it off a little bit and uh, you know people can pick out that detail. So just make sure that your rabbits are all in line. You can see the rabbit here and this is the side piece with the rabbit in it and this is the side piece with the rabbit in it here. That way it just kind of flows. Alright, once you have that set then you can go ahead and about a half, uh, an inch and a half back, just go ahead and pre-drill and countersink your screws two and two.
Now this is how the unit will sit and now we need to take our 12 inch piece that I told you about in the beginning of the video that's going to have the 245s in the end. We need to get that piece cut and put our shelf in here. But we've got 145 cut. We can go ahead and from the long point of this 45, we can measure back 12 inches, make our other mark, and go ahead and make our other 45 degree cut on the other end. Now another way to make the 45 degree cut is on your table saw. With your table saw blade tilted to 45 degrees and you can use your miter gauge or you can use something like a sled that is for 45 degree cuts which is what this one is. I'm not going to use the sled for this because not everybody has a sled. I'm going to use my miter gauge and my blade is already set to 45 degrees. Alright guys, uh, the 12 inch shelf fits right up here up top on the unit. You want to make sure that you know it slides back and forth so you want to make sure that it's seated exactly in the right position. Nice and square and level. And you'll pretty much know it is because the actual angles will sit perfectly uh, on the sides here. All right, with that, we can go ahead and add a couple of nails in here. We're gonna use a couple of framing nails like we did before. Uh, you can use a little bit of glue if you'd like. Now, this may, while you're nailing or, or, or pre-drilling, it may want to slip. One way to prevent that is to take one of your cutoffs from your 45 degree angle. If you happen to have any left, or a scrap piece, uh, you can take a scrap piece and cut a 45 degree angle on it and slide it right up under the shelf on one side uh, and it should fit perfectly, the angle should fit perfectly and you can clamp that into position so it won't allow the shelf to slide while you pre-drill and nail your uh, shelf in to place. Alright, so let's do that. And as before I'm just going to pre-drill and use a couple of the trim nails uh, for this shelf. and I'm just drilling at an angle. And you can take your piece out now because it, it's not going anywhere. Alright, with the shelf installed, if you want, you can go ahead and set those nails uh, like we did on the side pieces and fill them with a little bit of glue and sand to uh, sand the wood to get some of that sawdust in there and create your own little wood putty. Go ahead now and uh, clean up everything and get ready for a finish if you'd like. I'm just going to clear coat mine. Uh, but with the size of this unit, it's not very big. Uh, it can actually be hung on a wall. And uh, you know you can just get an anchor into a couple of studs and hang it on a wall. Uh, it can be set up and configured a lot of different ways, however you want to. Um, and also, you can add to it by building some more cubes. You can really get creative with the way you modulate this and put it together. Um, this is kind of the orientation that I'm going to have it displayed. Let's go ahead and dock the shelf and see what it looks like. Alright guys, well that wraps up this week's project. I greatly appreciate you sticking with me and I hope you enjoyed it. Now as you saw, you can really get creative with this by adding additional cues and changing the layout of it. Maybe changing the orientation in which it's displayed or even hanging it on a wall. Add some color to it and it would make a great display and shelving unit for a kid's room. Because of its simplicity, it's an excellent starter project for you beginning woodworkers, so give it a try in your shop. If you like this project, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I put out a new project every week, and down in the description of this video, you can find my other social networking links. As always, guys, until next week, I'll see you soon. Oh, guys, don't forget, July 10th through the 23rd is our second annual World of Geek Wars event. A lot of great prizes are up for grabs, so be sure to check out this link for more information. 
Look forward to seeing you there. Let the battle begin.